Good morning. This is a major story in Asia and gets a lot of coverage now in engineering and industrial publications. This is called a supercritical carbon dioxide power system. And it's the first one in the world that's in the field making money. Steam engines have been around for centuries. Using steam to generate power made the Industrial Revolution possible. For the first time, we could set something on fire and do something besides cook and use it to keep us warm. Steam can drive turbines and do work. Engineers knew from the beginning that a lot of that energy is wasted just generating that steam. Boiling water takes a lot of energy and scientists have been looking for a better source than water and steam. SCO2 is supercritical carbon dioxide. CO2 that's maintained in a state above critical temperature and pressure, which is over 31 degrees Celsius and 1,070 PSI. Once there, CO2 acts both as a liquid and as a gas. And in industrial applications, that becomes very useful. As a gas, there's less resistance. And as a liquid, it provides greater thrust. And turning CO2 into supercritical CO2 is more energy efficient than turning water into steam. A steel factory in Guizhou deployed two SCO2 units, 30 megawatts in total, and hooked them up to the grid. This is a steel plant. It's not an electric utility. This is a factory that generates a lot of heat and now is converting that waste heat into power and selling it back. Compared to plants that capture waste heat to make steam using water, Shouton 1 produces 50% more electricity and improves efficiency by over 85%. What's more, the SCO2 system is simpler and easier to maintain and operate. The green energy people are excited about this new technology. The concept is the same as with steam turbines, but with double the efficiency, a lot smaller, and a better design. The waste thermal energy is not released, but instead is absorbed by the supercritical CO2. As long as a steel mill is generating waste heat, the turbines keep spinning. Electricity is being produced without generating more carbon dioxide. This is a major breakthrough then because of the range of applications for this technology throughout China's industrial sector. Any plant or any factory that produces high volumes of waste heat can hook up these steam-free generators. China is the world's largest manufacturer, the world's largest buyer and consumer of crude oil the world's largest smelter for metals. So imagine all the oil refineries and all the steel plants, all the aluminum plants, shipbuilders, car makers, all the industrial scale facilities across China who are major consumers of electricity. Nuclear power plants and mobile power units are electrical utilities who are already burning coal or smashing atoms together to boil water to spin the turbines. The carbon dioxide is not consumed or burned. It runs in a closed loop. That's the science of it. The closed loop also describes the economics of this system. This steel mill in Guizhou is a consumer of electricity. It buys power to make steel, but engineers there are converting the waste heat from their steel operations into electricity and selling it back to the grid. For this steel plant, and soon enough for thousands of other steel plants across China, this is a new revenue stream. This is Chongqing. Be good.